in our system, in order to do the homework for 2.5, there's a few theorems that we're going to need to prove first. Given PQ is congruent to TR, prove that T, I'm sorry, PR is congruent to TQ. So if we're given that the segments are congruent, we know that congruent segments implies equal measure. And then any segment is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So QR is congruent to RQ, which means, again, if you have congruent segments, then you have equal measure. And now, if we combine PQ and QR, we get PR. We combine TR and RQ, we get TQ. Therefore, those measures are equal. So that would just be arithmetic or addition property of equality. So now we can say if we have equal measure, then we have concurrent segments. Therefore, segment PR is concurrent to segment TQ. So now that we've completed this proof, we won't need to do all of this. We won't need to go to measure in our homework because now we have a theorem that reads, if a segment is added to congruent segments, so in other words, if QR is added to these congruent segments, then the sums are congruent. And the short form for that, if you add the same segment to congruent segments, then the sums are congruent. And really that segment should be singular. So now that we've written this proof, we kind of had a model to work from. So let's use the proof addition of the same segment to be our model or inspiration for this proof. So we start out with statements, reasons, and we're given angle EFJ is congruent to angle HFG. So then we can say the measure of angle EFJ is equal to the measure of angle HFG. Because if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measure. Now, we need to go from this segment, or this, sorry, this angle to this one here. And from this guy, to this one here. So it looks like I need to combine EFJ with JFH. And HFG, I suppose I can co combine JFH again. And that again is the reflexive property. Any angle is congruent to itself. So if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measure. Now, if I combine the measures in lines 2 and 4, EFJ and JFH, then I'm going to get the measure of angle EFH is equal to the measure, and I'm combining HFG with, that's HFG and JFH, so these two. So that means that would be equal to the measure of angle JFG. 
and that would be like arithmetic add and that was lines two and five or I'm sorry two and four and now for line six if you have two angles with equal measure then they are congruent angles so now I can say angle EFH is congruent to angle JFG. And let's not forget the T tool. And we've marked our diagram. It looks good. So there we have adding the same angle implies congruent angles. this proof they want us to combine KR and RM to get KM KR is not congruent to RM. This should be OS. And then OS is not congruent to SP. That should be RM. So in our first line, we have KR is congruent to OS. My apologies for the error, and that's given. And I suppose I could go ahead and say RM is congruent to SP right away. And then in line two, that means the measure of KR is going to be equal to the measure of OS, and the measure of RM is going to be equal to the measure of SP. Congruent segments implies equal measure. So now I can combine those measures. KM is equal to OP and that's just arithmetic adding and then segment KM would be congruent to segment OP and that would be equal measure implies congruent segments. Put in my t-tool and the diagram was already marked except for that final. And I guess I'll use a circle. To prove this theorem we are given that TWY, angle TWY, is congruent to angle TXY. That needs to be a Y. That's a typo, I'm sorry. And TWX is congruent to YXW. So we begin with statements and reasons. Angle T W Y, it's this one here, is congruent to angle T X Y. T X Y is this angle here. And angle Y. W X, this one here, is congruent to angle Y X W. If two angles are congruent, 
then their measures are equal. Oops, sorry about that. And measure. Now, if I combine angle TWY with angle YWX, I'm going to get the larger angle here. So the measure of angle TWX is equal to the measure of angle TXW. add or arithmetic and then finally if you have equal measure then you have congruent angles So now we've just proven the theorem. If the same angle is added to congruent angles, oh, sorry, if congruent angles are added to congruent angles, now we've just proven the theorem. If congruent angles are added to congruent angles, the sums are congruent. So that should be add congruent angles implies congruent angles. The same with subtraction. So we could, in theory, just use the same diagrams. What do we have? A segment PQRT? So let's jump back there. If a segment or ang angle is subtracted from congruent segments or angles, then the differences are congruent. So I'm just going to do this in terms of segments. So my given would be that PR is congruent to TQ, and we would need to prove that PQ is congruent to TR. So then if PR is congruent to TQ, then congruent segments implies equal measure. So then PR is equal to TQ and QR is the overlap. So that segment QR is congruent to segment RQ that again is the reflexive property. Any segment or angle is congruent to itself. And if they are congruent, then they have equal measure. So now PR minus QR gives me PQ. And TQ minus RQ gives me TR. So let's just subtract arithmetic. And then PQ 
is congruent to segment TR because if they have equal measure, then they are congruent segments. So that leaves one proof for you to solve on your own. You will have to, as we just did here, you will have to write the given in the proof statement and write a diagram and then write out the proof. But you can use any prior proof, sorry, If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Smash that like button. You know you wanna. Come on, come on, give it a thumbs up.